So in this video, uh, what we're going to do is learn how we can create our own data structure to go inside of a uh, SQLite database. So, uh, so far we've only looked at, we've looked at an existing database and now we can run different kinds of uh, queries using the select, uh, using the select statement against a data set, data set that has already uh, existed and the, the columns of the tables are all defined, all the tables themselves are also defined. Uh, but now we're going to look at how we can create our own database, create our own tables, uh, and uh, and whatnot. So we're going to be looking at uh, how we can uh, do that. And so in this video in particular, we're going to learn how we can create tables, what is the syntax, what are the different data types, and what are some other kind of Identi some other kind of uh, attributes that we can assign to uh, columns. So you'll notice that I don't have a uh, the terminal up yet. Uh, that's because uh, I just have a, a text editor here. The one that I'm using is called uh, Visual Studio Code. Uh, you can install it as part of the Anaconda, but really any text editor uh, will work. So I already have a file created called uh, create-tables.sql, and it's in the uh, same folder as it's just in a particular folder, some folder with everything else. Um, but we're not going to run it against Chinook.db. We're going to create our own database and then run it as well. So we'll see how to do that. So the first thing that we're going to do is create a table. And uh, we're going to create a table called uh, student. And we're going to give it some columns. And then we're going to give the columns some uh, attributes. So we're going to create a table. A student and by the way, uh, to so to do comments in in SQL, it's just either two hyphens or you can do uh, this forward slash star and then star uh, forward slash. So there's like called C style comments and these are multi line. But anyway, we'll just create a table student. So syntax to create a table is just create table and then the name of uh, the table. And I have to do this. I'm going to split this out across multiple lines so it's easier to read. And there's one other thing that we can do uh, that I usually like to do when we're creating new data structures. And if your case you're going to run this uh, code over uh, and over again, if you're doing any kind of debugging, is what you can do is say create table if not exists. And what this adding this if not exists clause it does exactly what you think it does. Um, it'll create this table student unless there already is a table called student inside of the database. In which case this statement is this entire statement is just ignored, and we'll just ignore it. Okay, so I've just had that there. It's just a syntax uh, feature that we can look at. So now we need to add columns to our uh, to our database. And uh, remember uh, earlier when I mentioned that databases are we call highly structured data. Well, that means that all the columns have uh, data types associated with them. So we're going to discuss some of the uh, we're going to discuss three of the main data types. There's a there's a fourth one, but we're not really going to get into that. Okay, so let's. Before we uh, get into the data types, let's first think about what kind of things uh, you would need if you're, you're managing, suppose, like a university a database uh, system. So we have, uh, we have we need students, and uh, one thing I'm going to leave at the end is a challenge for you guys to write the create statement, create table statement for professors. But we'll say create table for students. So we'll need to give each of the students a unique student ID. So we'll just create a column called student uh, ID okay and uh, this is we're going to add the, the data types later but student ID is a good thing to start with um, and we'll do first name we'll get we'll have to do names right so first name uh, middle name if they have one and then last name and then uh, some other information that might be useful to know is a GPA and uh, email so their university email uh, that is, so each student when you enroll, you'll get assigned a student ID and then a unique uh, university uh, email. So we can just define the columns. Uh, well, so these are the columns uh, that we'll define here. So for student ID, there are a couple options that we can do for this one, but I think the, one of the most straightforward options to do for a student ID is to just say give it a, a an integer, and uh, sequentially as new students join in, you just make just assign them the next available uh, number. So we can do that. So one of the data types is integer, and it's just exactly what you think it is, like in any other programming language, it's just an integer. And then you'll note that the size of this integer might be, you know, however many uh, bytes is required to, for uh, this uh, particular column. Okay, so that's one of the data types, integer. Uh, the next data type for 
things like first name. First name clearly has to be some kind of string or, or, or text value. And there's a data type for that called text. So this is just a string of some uh, particular of some particular length. It really can be anything. Okay. So now middle name will also be text, and then last name will also be text. GPA, uh, well, it can't really be a, it can be an integer, it has to be a, some kind of floating point, uh, floating point number. So in, uh, in SQL, this is not called a float, it's called a real. So in, in SQL, we would call these guys reals. So this is actually a floating point decimal uh, number. So any number with a decimal point, that's what we'll say is real. And finally, email will just be uh, text. Okay, so this is like the very uh, elementary outline of our uh, of our table here. But there's a some but there's some other things. So there's some other uh, constraints that we can add on our uh, on on our table here. Uh, in particular, think about uh, we have to think one particular thing to think about would be null values. Is when can we have null values? When when should we not have uh, null values? Because it's not necessarily the case that every column has to be uh, not null. So uh, what? Uh, so so let's think about something like uh, a student ID. Well, we don't want to be able to insert a, a student into. We don't want to allow a student to join the university without a valid student ID. And we're actually going to get to this because there's a special kind of constraint that we can apply to a student ID that we'll, we'll look at in a second. So we'll just leave this uh, for now. Let's look, let's consider a, a middle name or so consider a first name. Well, all students, when we put them into our database, when they join the university, we want them to have a a, a first name. We don't want to have, we don't want to allow them to have a null value there. So the way to specify that you're not allowed to have null values in a column is just not null. So this is do not allow null values when inserting into this column. That's essentially what not null. Uh, means so anytime we run so we'll get to how we can insert data into tables later but when we have not null that means that we have to specify a value for this column for each row now let's do a middle name and middle name is a case where well students there might be some people that might not have a given middle name in which case we don't want to, to we don't want this column to be not null we can allow this column uh, to be null Last name or surname or family name. This uh, should also be uh, not null. And these are just kind of assumptions that I'm uh, that we're going on. So we'll say first name and then last name are not null. GPA can't be null. We have to have some GPA assigned to each student, um, whether it be some default while you're starting in or not. And then finally, the email is also going to be not null because as a university, we're going to be assigning the email. Okay, so that how that's how we can handle not null uh, values. There's another, uh, there's two other constraints that I want to get to, and that is the uh, unique constraint, and that is that's, that says that each value in this column has to be unique. You can't insert a, you can't insert a, um, a, a an entry, a row into this table where this column has the same value as something that's already in there. So one thing that's useful for is email. We want the emails of each of these students to be unique, because if you have two rows with the same email, and you want to send an email to that student. Which student do you send it to? So email is an is a great candidate for having uh, so to say unique. So how we designate a column as being unique is just the unique keyword. So we just say unique, and this will have um, this will have unique uh, entry. So if we if we try to insert a row in here, and this is and we we don't have this unique constraint, then SQL is going to throw an error saying, hey, you can't do this. This already this value already exists. Okay, and the last uh, thing that we'll look at is student ID, and a student ID is is a kind of special special thing, a special column here because it uniquely identifies each student. So in some sense, it's unique. It's also uh, not null, and we want to be able to use this to to, to uniquely identify each uh, to, to uniquely identify each student through a number. So this is what we call a primary key, and this is used so each table should have each table you create should have some kind of primary key associated with it. This is a unique, uh, not null value used to uniquely 
I know I know I just use unique twice, but uniquely to uniquely identify a row in this table. So if we say something like student ID, so we do a where clause saying student ID equals some value, we will return one and exactly one uh, student. Similarly, you notice that email is also not null and unique. So in a way, you, the email could have also been the, the primary key, but usually, just as a, a conventional point, is we set primary keys to be some uh, some ID value on a particular uh, table. So the, the kind of the convention is, is to have a table name and then say this table name plus this ID uh, a suffix and then that becomes your integer primary key. So if you noticed with the Chinook database we had uh, we had track ID, we had album ID, we had artist ID um, and those corresponded to the unique IDs for each uh, of the tables that we were dealing with. So this creates uh, the student table. That's what uh, that's what this unique primary key does. So every table that we create will we should give a something to be a unique ID that's an integer primary key. And primary key has some other properties on it that we'll, that we'll just discuss later that are also really nice. But anyway, all right. So uh, now that we have this, kind of one thing that I want to leave to you guys as a challenge is to create a table uh, for professor. Create a table called professor, and I want it to have, uh, I want to have four columns. I want to have an employee uh, ID. And that's going to be your integer primary key. You should have a first name, the professor, a last name, and uh, an email. And I want you to kind of follow the constraints on all these that we did here, but write the syntax, uh, write the syntax for that. So I'm going to leave that as a challenge, and uh, we will get to the correct answer as soon as we get back. Okay. So to create uh, the table, professor, we're going to follow the same template here. So we're going to say create. Table if not exists, professor. And uh, we want to have an employee ID. So we'll say employee ID. This is going to be the integer primary key here. So you need to identify each professor as an employee. Then we'll have uh, the first name here. This is going to be text not null as it is in the students. And then we'll have last name, text not null. I've omitted middle name just to save typing. And finally, email. And this will be text not null unique. So this will create uh, a, a table for professors. So now that we have this SQL, uh, what we can do is create a database and then run it. So I'll go over here. So I want to create a new SQLite database so I can do that. So I can just say SQLite3 university.db. And if no, notice that there's no other database called university.db, so SQLite is going to create one. So I do this, and I've now created a university.db, and then I can run my uh, see the SQL in create tables, uh, but just by calling dot read create tables dot SQL, run that guy, and then let's see if it actually worked. If I just type in tables, you'll see that I have two tables, professor and student, and if I run schema, they will have uh, the same schema that uh, we copied over here. So. Uh, we have successfully succeeded in creating uh, tables, and now we have our own uh, database. And if I get out of SQLite, you can see that we have a university.db uh, that I can go back uh, into and uh, you know see that again. So we've created a database using SQLite. So in this video, to recap, we learned how to create tables, create our own data structures. We've learned about the different data types that SQLite has, as well as different constraints that we can put on the columns on the table, and then we learn how we can create a new uh, a database using SQLite as well. So that's how we can create tables using SQLite.